I'm Scott Allen Miller. It is the 22nd of June, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today we are heading out to begin a series of looking at houses in the Reparto of Fatima on the north side of Leon. So we're going to do our first one today and we're going to get to that right after the bump. All right, so this is going to be pretty interesting. We're going to be doing a comparison between three different houses, all in the Reparto of Fatima on the north side of Leon, which is the basically the northernmost Reparto, which is like a barrio, but a little bit farther out than the city center, uh, that's really in the city itself of Leon. If you live in the Reparto de Fatima, you can walk into the city center pretty easily. A little bit of a walk for sure, but you can do it. It's, it's connected to the city, getting taxis and stuff still very easy. So it's considered one of the city repartos. Now in Fatima, this is an extremely desirable region of the city. Everybody wants to live in Fatima. It's got some of the largest uh, collection of mansions in the city, All a very, very safe region, very quiet region, and it's close access to many things such as the Paseo Real shopping mall and the highway heading north to Chinandega. So Fatima is very expensive within reason, right? As far as Nicaraguan housing goes, it is on the extremely expensive side. There are very few places in the region where you're going to pay more of a premium to be able to have that address, right? So everybody wants to be able to say they're in Fatima. We've got three houses that are all at the exact same asking price. This is rentals. And the price that they're asking, we're not making any comments as to what they're going to get, whether or not you can haggle, nothing like that. This is just, we have three houses that we're being shown this week, and we're going to show them on different days, and we're going to dig in. But they're all very interesting because they are exactly $500 per month asking for each one. None of them are furnished, which a lot of people are surprised. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today is that almost no houses in Nicaragua are furnished. Some are, that's an option, but it is rare. You're going to pay, obviously, a premium for that. What throws a lot of people off is that appliances don't come with houses here. In the United States, we're used to things like microwaves and refrigerators and stoves. Those things are part of your apartment and you would never buy them and move them with you. In Italy, it's so extreme that even the cupboards are things that you take with you. So the appliances, the cupboards, almost everything except for the sinks themselves. And there's even times where I've seen the sinks go, uh, can move in Italy. Here, it's in between. Your sinks and cupboards, those are going to be static. They're attached to the house. They're custom made for that house. But your appliances, your refrigerator, your stove, your microwave, those kinds of things, you bring them with you. So account for that when you're thinking about an apartment here. It does give you a bit more flexibility, but it means you're buying those things in country. If you're coming here for one year and that's it, that could be a problem. You're going to spend quite a bit on appliances that you're going to have to leave behind or, of course, sell in some way, which will be a little bit difficult to do. Of course, people will buy used things, so that's an option. But it's a whole thing you're going to have to manage if you come and stay in that manner, right? So that's a bit of complication that you may not be accounting for. So think about that. And when we're looking at houses, and many of you have seen houses in the video previously, um, be aware when we show kitchens and stuff that there's just nothing in them right? Everything is empty, but you can picture where a refrigerator is going to go, where a stove is going to go. You just have to be mentally prepared that everything has been ripped out. There's nothing in any houses. When, when you live here, we get used to that, and so we don't think anything of it. But when you're coming from the United States, it's consistently a shock that Americans and Canadians are so used to all those things being included that they're not there uh, throws them off. It's a whole thing they're not accounting for, and then you have to go out and buy those. Now, it's very easy. Things tend to be affordable here. Uh, it's easy to get them and get them delivered. You just buy them in town. You can do it the same day. Like, none of that's a huge deal, but you have to be prepared. Okay, so we're going to start off with our first house today, uh, and, and we're going to break these up and show them over a few days, and they are three very different houses. That they're all at the same price is really interesting. None of them are like super big mansions, uh, but they vary from, uh, you know, different in size, different parts of the neighborhood, different styles, uh, and give you a fair idea. Before we get into that, and I need to mention this more often, um, in general, Nicaraguans don't believe in putting any effort into selling a house. No one will ever 
clean a house for you. No one will prepare it. No one will stage it. So when you're used to looking at videos in the United States, you will see houses that are staged with, uh, you know, beautiful furniture and window coverings and all these things to make you picture what it would be like when you're going to live there. And in Nicaragua, people will barely unlock the door. They will often lock parts of the house and only let you see some of it. They will put up a big fight about getting in to see a house. We have had some of the people we work with traditionally said they, they're not interested in letting people see the houses and generate interest in them. They will only show specific people houses, which makes no sense because obviously if you have a specific person, you've already done most of the work to convince them that they want a house in an area or a style. They're just it, the desire to avoid selling houses here. Uh, or renting them is strong and it's a cultural thing and you talk to Nicaraguans and they're like we don't understand so Nicaraguans know that other Nicaraguans are constantly undermining the ability to sell and rent houses it's it's a cultural thing it's kind of similar to and we run into this with houses a lot too no real estate agent will send you a location of a house they'll give you a rough description ah go to the park go west a little bit it's over here and you never know if it's really there and we consistently are like send us a pin drop of where you i don't know how to do that what you're a real estate agent you should be doing this at every house every day to every client you're on whatsapp so there's a show my location if you're there just hit it if you you, you got to have a map how did you get there send it like they don't have any preparation, this is consistent. We go from firm to firm, person to person. We do so much. Some of it's independent, some of it's firms. Nobody has the first clue of how to tell you how to get to a house, a house they're at. They don't know how to use the tools. It's crazy. So that's one thing. No one knows how to simply get you to a house they want to show. No one who works in showing houses has put in any effort learning how to do their jobs. It's absolutely crazy. Then the people who own houses are, or the people who own firms that show houses are routinely doing anything they can to block people discovering what they need to know about the houses, where it is, what it looks like, what the specs are, anything. That's why so many people have asked us to go look at houses. We're constantly having to cajole people, please show, this, show us this house. No, we don't want to. Well, why do you have a sign up saying for sale? Uh, right, it's re constantly. So this is a whole cultural thing you have to get used to and have to be adapted for. If you see a house that's for sale, doesn't mean they're gonna talk to you. Right? I don't, why? I, I can't answer. And I can't find anybody who can answer, but they all agree that yes, this is a major problem. And Nicaraguans face this uphill battle of just getting to see and learn about houses that someone says they're wanting to sell. The only thing I can come up with, and people have agreed with me, is that there are so many people who are in a situation where part of the family wants to sell or rent and part of the family doesn't, that they put up the signs to placate one side of the family and then the other side of the family blocks the sales and just avoids having people talk to them about it. And so there are entire agencies who actually put up their signs and do this whole thing. And we know lots of people who've been caught by this, that they'll do all this stuff and encourage you to go look at houses. And then when you go to look at it, they won't show up. They'll say it's not available. They'll lock it, whatever. There's a whole industry in pretending to show houses. It's mind boggling. It's so weird. I'm sure there's so many things in America that are also so weird. This is a so weird thing here in Nicaragua. So it's one of the reasons I want to get out and show you guys houses because it's so hard to do. This takes a lot of work for us to just be allowed to show you a house. Sometimes it's houses that we have access to. It's, it's hard. Like this is, this is really a thing. So Let's get to the first house. I'm gonna walk you through. We got three cool houses and you're gonna be able to, over a period of days, I'm not gonna do them back to back, but over the next week or so, you're gonna be able to see these three houses and get a feel for what the options are in Fatima at $500 in very different ways so you can contrast and compare. I think that'll be fun. Let's go. So here we are in Fatima. This is, as we said, this is a reparto. So this is a bit outside the city. You can see there is some open space. Some of this is building lots that are available. It's a beautiful area. It's kind of a rainy day. You can see some new construction going on. Beautiful house across the street. We're a little bit shaky here. Sorry for that. Beautiful little front garden. Nothing very big. They have nice plants here. Little parking spot. There is a garage here behind me. We're not going to have that garage door open, but there's a big parking space inside. This is the breezeway on the side of the house. So I just kind of started a little bit uh, out of order here, but this is uh, common in a lot of modern construction in Nicaragua. This is where open air is on the side of the house and drainage for the big storms. And uh, it's normally locked away pretty well back in the front yard. Uh, and that allows for a lot of open air to pass through the house. This keeps a separation between the house and its neighboring houses to help keep it cool so you don't need air conditioning that often. 
You will find a lot of air conditioning here in Fatima. And notice quick the sidewalks. They are separate from the road. That's not something you see in the barrios. That's definitely not something you see downtown. Only some and only a very few of the uh, repartos have anything like that. Now at the front of the house, take a quick look. It's good to know what the neighbors are like. The neighborhood is like. It gives you a little bit of an idea of, of what things are going to uh, what what the, what the lifestyle in the neighborhoods is going to be like. And all of Fatima is very, very upscale, very nice, and very tranquil. This is a quiet, quiet area, unlike my house with the sound of running dogs everywhere. Coming in the front door, you have this concrete work on the side. That's a breezeway into the garage or an airway into the garage. This living room is quite nice. Now, all of this house is in really dark wood, which makes it very hard to film. It's quite attractive, but it's an old fashioned style. Lots of skylights. That's really cool. There's a lot of natural light. At no point are we using any major amount of electric light to light this house. You notice the lights are off. This is a dim day with the rain, and we still have a lot of natural light. And these really dark walls are absorbing a ton of light. So it feels much smaller uh, than it is, and it's hard for us to film. The kitchen pretty decent. Um, kitchens tend to be a little bit conservative, a little bit boring uh, in most of Nicaragua. It's just how kitchens are. Often they are for staff and not for uh, the homeowner. This is a smaller kitchen for sure. Some built-in cupboards. As we've mentioned, you would need to bring your own appliances. Notice that the, the little island on the right there is floating. So this is the pantry. It, it could be a, ba a bedroom, um, but it's actually a pantry. It has access to the breezeway and it has the public bath here. So this is what's meant to be the public bathroom. You go through the kitchen into the pantry, but it's kind of an upscale pantry um, and then back into the kitchen. Uh, so it's a little bit different than um, you're used to. Public bathrooms are often a little bit different than people expect here. This is actually the dining room, this space. Um, and then that opens into uh, this living room area with the TV on the floor. And uh, there's a little bit of, of damage in the, the roof. They're gonna get that fixed. This is the garage area. Now this could be modified to be another giant space for anything you like that is uh, open to the front. That concrete open area there though, that's open air to the front, even though it's not uh, security open to the front. Um, it's not like a, a doorway. Um, it's, it's not sealed off uh, completely. So you'd want to be really careful how you're using this, but using it for storage, for parking, anything like that is going to work really, really well. All right, let's head into the house. This, this beautiful woodwork goes throughout. It really is attractive, but it's a very old fashioned style, at least for American sensibilities. This is what I expect from the Midwest in the 70s, right? It's much more modern here. It's well done, but it gives me a very throwback feeling in a nice house. So this is the first of the bedrooms, these are moderate sized bedrooms. Again, the breezeway on the side, so lots of air coming through if that door is open. This would be an easy house to add air conditioning into, but it doesn't have air conditioning today. I say this a lot, these houses really don't need air conditioning when well designed, so don't be surprised when you don't see it. You can generally add it, you can bring your own, even as a rental, you can normally put it in, not a problem. There we go, window onto the breezeway again. That's how all these rooms are expected to stay cool, so you don't really need air conditioning. Nicaraguans would generally not use air conditioning, but um, a lot of a lot of uh, expats will want it. Um, nice, good-sized bathroom for these for these rooms here, and the last bedroom here. Now this is really really weird. This bedroom connects to another bedroom, and that is the back patio. This is a very strange layout. You can see more bedrooms going across the back back there. Why is this like this? I have no idea. It is one of the strangest layouts I've seen in a long time. So this is a five bedroom with three bedrooms connected through this kind of hallway in the living room. And then one bedroom that connects to the garage and that one bedroom we were just in. And then an additional bedroom that floats out in the back garden. It is absolutely bizarre and they didn't have keys to those back ones so we didn't film it right away and then later we discovered how to get back there like actually that's a weird thing in a house to have to discover that you can see the breezeway open there on the side on the right and this is the back garden now and we have this one bedroom here on the left lots of windows and its own door and these two uh, bedrooms that are in this uh, back connected area actually have a jack and jill bathroom so they connect to each other and that's a popular thing here. 
Um, but it's very strange because the one is not really connected to the rest of the house except through the other bedroom through the bathroom. It is very strange. The back garden is quite nice. There's not really anything done with it, but it has a nice big tree. It does have a very strange tower from the neighbor looking down into it. I have no idea why that's like that. It is weird, but it is a pleasant back garden right now. It's just a beautiful tree in a nice space, but putting in a, a real garden with flowers and different types of plants, very easy. There's a lot you could do, picnic tables, uh, reading area, a lot of things you could do out there. So let's head into these back rooms and take a look around. This is the isolated room. The nice thing about it is that it has a tremendous amount of windows. Uh, if you needed to open that door, you open those windows, you're basically outside. All the, the air is on one side of it. Um, now the Jack and Jill bathroom is basically impossible to see. It is so dark, but it's a standard bathroom, um, good size and then we can go into the other bedroom. All right, we're gonna head into this last bedroom now. You can see the Jack and Jill bathroom on the left there. In front of us is the garage. This connects into that, and there's an open doorway into that third bedroom that we saw earlier. This is where we originally came in, and we're gonna go back in there. So this room could pop into that bedroom, or into the back garden, or into the garage, but at no point does it connect into the living room. So depending on what you do with the house, it's either very isolated or very connected. It is strange. If you were setting some of these rooms up to be kind of public spaces like offices or storage rooms or whatever, it would make a lot of sense potentially. And those could be like in-law suites or guest suites that are off in the back. But if they only connect through another bedroom, that would be weird. Really, it depends how you want to use them. So we're gonna go back through and show some of these. Just again, there's the Jack and Jill on the right coming out into the garden. It's a, it's a quirky layout, but it gives you five bedrooms, a beautiful back garden, a lot of bathrooms, um, and some pretty decent space. The garage is fantastic, uh, as is the living room and the dining room and the overall look. This is out on the street, just to give you an idea of the neighborhood here in Fatima. Uh, it's a little bit on the north, pretty clear, uh, pretty close to the residencias. As always, thanks for joining us. Please remember to like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel. You can buy me a coffee at the link above, buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And if you would do so kindly, we would greatly appreciate it if you would share on social media, tell your friends, provide links, and when get in those comments, say hello, uh, ask how things are going, let us know what you think of the house, what do you think of this one, what do you think of future ones that have, we have coming up. Uh, and uh, if you go down and like other people's comments, that helps as well. All the engagement, talk to each other, talk to me, Everything helps make the channel happen. Thanks, everybody. We have two more houses at the exact same price in the same neighborhood coming up in the next few days. So stay tuned for those so we can compare how the different houses uh, go together. And I will see all of you manana.